Stan Gibalisco here, proprietor and operator of amateur radio station W1GV, Whiskey One Good Vibrations, at your service to describe um, briefly a mode of communications that I haven't heard much discussion about. Uh, that could be because of the difficulty of doing it. Uh, it's kind of inconvenient, but uh, it's one of those exotic modes that if you have the necessary equipment and the necessary circumstances, you could probably try it. I call it undersea acoustic communications. And I think that pretty well describes the phenomenon. Now, I'm talking about under the ocean where the index of refraction with respect to sound waves of the water varies. Uh, in fresh water uh, it varies as well but not necessarily in the same way. But in the ocean typically at a depth of about 900 meters you have a zone, a sort of a stratified zone at which sound waves travel a little bit more slowly than they do above and below. Uh, the speed ranges from about 1.48 to 1.5 kilometers per second of acoustic waves under the ocean. That's a, a well, just about pretty close to a mile per second, um, which is quite a lot faster than uh, than in air, but but it's certainly nowhere near the speed of light in it a vacuum or anything like that. So if you're going to communicate with acoustical waves under the surface of the ocean, you're going to have to be willing to put up with some propagation delays. Um, however, if you suspend transponders at a depth of about 900 meters beneath the surface of the ocean so that these transponders lie within this zone where the, the acoustic waves travel a little more slowly, sort of a, a stratified zone, 1.48 kilometers per second roughly in that zone and 1.5 above and below, you have a tendency to get a ducting effect, very similar to tropospheric ducting of radio waves in the atmosphere. But this is, uh, I guess, what would you call it? Uh, aquatic ducting uh, of sound waves in the ocean. Submarine ducting. Well, no, that sounds like something weird happening to underwater boats. But the sound waves tend to refract back and forth within this zone, and if the, if the angle is pretty much horizontal to start with, the, the propagation angle, you will tend to get a ducting effect which can occur over considerable distances uh, much greater than would be otherwise possible because of the curvature of the earth. You can literally communicate if you have the patience to wait for the waves to propagate for thousands of miles, thousands of kilometers this way uh, at ordinary acoustic frequencies, say 500 hertz uh, there would probably be some difficulty with various environmental agencies uh, if ham radio operators were to attempt this, to suspend these transponders from boats and attempt to communicate, obviously by CW, using uh, audio frequency tones at, say, 500 hertz, uh, because marine life communicates at various frequencies using acoustic waves underwater, most notably whales in the 20 uh, hertz zone, except for that one whale that they call the loneliest whale, uh, who communicates at 52 hertz or sends out signals at 52 hertz. I made a video about that, I believe. Someone uh, suggested that I do that a while back. but. Um, you wouldn't want to interfere with the communication of marine life and 
is a very high probability that you would. Although uh, we don't seem to have many qualms about how our ham radio signals affect wildlife above the surface of the earth. Um, the, only, the, the wildest life that my signals will affect is probably other radio hams who <laughs> hear my signal and think, damn it, why doesn't he turn his power up 10 watts? What does he have? But it would be very interesting to have the first, say, round the world, halfway around the world, uh, sub, uh, sub, submarine, subsurface ocean. Uh, what, what do they call that? I've got a crib sheet here. I should read it. Undersea acoustic communication from one side of the world to the other. Obviously, it wouldn't be a conversation because of the propagation delay. But it would nevertheless be a fascinating experiment to conduct, and one that uh, is within the realm of budgetary constraints. Again, governments of the world might object, but uh, we could work with them. Uh, worth a try. Just, uh, just a little bit of daydreaming here on a very cold third day of 2017. Very cold for the black holes of Dakota Territory. Minus 10 degrees Fahrenheit. Gotta kinda work on the car to keep it from freezing up. It's one of those cars built for Los Angeles or San Diego, not the mountains of the middle of the country. Oh well, cars don't necessarily work and this might not necessarily work either, this propagation scheme. But it can't possibly work if we don't try. Stangibalisco W1 GV saying 73, which means best regards in ham radio jargon. And so long, which, at 500 hertz under the sea, in CW would still translate to da-da-da-da-da.